Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Cool Story Bro back here with my fifth Wi Fi battle. Uh, I'm sorry for the wait, it's been a minute. This has been a long anticipated battle between me and one of my friends, Stitched Ego. We actually had to have a rematch because the first battle, he was actually beating the crap out of me with these same teams here. He was killing me, killing me. And then his Wi Fi drops because he has bad connection. And that, that's sort of why this battle is so long anticipated, because it was hard setting it up. So anyway, we start off here. He sends out his underbite, his Aerodactyl. I go for my Didos attack, my Gyarados. Because now that I know a little bit more about his team, I can at least play like I'm not a complete noob. Oh my god, if you would've saw that first one. Anyway, I stay in. Why? Because I got Shardy Berry. I stay in on the Stone Edge. He goes for it. And after an Intimidate and a Shardy Berry, that pretty much does next to nothing to Gyarados. Now I go for Ice Fang. The reason why is because in the first battle, his Aerodactyl did some BS. It has Bright Powder, actually. And I, now I know Ice Fang doesn't have perfect accuracy. You're thinking, why didn't I go for Aqua Tail? Because that's what I run on it. Aqua Tail has 90 accuracy. I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to miss and get hacked here again. Because I missed Spore on my first battle. So anyway, he Stone Edges my Gyarados. It goes down. I send out Glass Score. High score to Glass Score. What you know about getting on the top charts. So I go for the Protect, obvious reasons. You know, get Poison. He knows I'm going for Protect. He goes for the Home Claws. Now what I kind of realized was that I don't have a super effective move to hurt that Aerodactyl with. I'm kind of walled by it for real. I didn't realize that until after I sent it out. But you know what? I decided to improvise. He goes for the Crunch, I guess, to get the defense drop. And he got it right there. So I go for the Fling because I can't really do anything else. I can't Earthquake. Acrobatics doesn't hit very hard, especially while I'm holding the item. So I decided to get rid of it. I throw the Toxic Orb at it. And now I know he's going to think I'm going to try to protect again so he can just let his Aerodactyl go down. I I'm predicting that one. He pulls it back. He sends out his Dizzy Duck, his Porygon Z. And I'm like, no, Acrobatics. Hardest hit move on this thing. His Porygon Z takes about like half of his HP. He's kind of salty that I predicted that. Now I outspeed and go for the Earthquake. The reason why I went for Earthquake, because I, I figured it would finish it off. After after this battle, I realized Acrobatics actually hits way harder of the two. But So I, I knew he ran Ice Beam. That's the reason why he brought it out. High score goes down. Unfortunately, my high score fell a little bit. And so Life Orb just puts that thing within an inch of its own life. I decided to send out Smeargle, Leonardo Da Vinci. Now, I go for Smore, Spore. Like literally 90% of every, no, 99.9% .9 of every other Smeargle you've ever seen. But this Smeargle's a little different. I go for the Quiver Dance. No, this Smeargle doesn't have Moody. It doesn't even have Baton Pass. I'm going for Quiver Dance and I don't have Baton Pass. I hope you can see where this is going. So I get three boosts in my stats special attack, special defense, and speed. He tries to use agility so he can try to outpace me and probably screw me over. I'm like, no! Vacuum way straight to the face. Priority. I'm painting some nasty pictures all over this dude's team right now. And he sends out his baggy pants, Medicham. That Medicham is a threat. That thing is the most brutal Pokemon ever. I did not know it could take hits as well as it did in our first battle. I mean, seriously, it's, look at how skinny that thing is. So I use Spore on it. And I go for another Quiver Dance trying to set up while I was asleep because I'm going to need every single one I can get. But seriously, look how skinny that Medicham is. Like, you would not think something that frail, that thin... Like, the thing, sh it doesn't even have shoulders, yo. It, this thing's arms are thinner than my wrist. Its wrists are thicker than its shoulders. So I use store power, and it just does half damage. Now, store power does, like, an extra 20 damage for each stat boost you have in each individual stat. I use, like, what, three quiver dances? Four now, I think? So, you know, this is coming off, like, 60, 120, 180, 240 base power. Not even killing it. Look, he does one drain punch. He does one drain punch. And just look how much HP he gets back. He pretty much undid all of my glorious artwork. Oh, it was a disappointment. Look at that. I'm thinking, he gets full HP back. I'm hanging on because of Focus Sash, which is one HP. One of the best items in the game. So I try to spore again, because I'm at like plus four speed. He bullet punches. How is Medicham or bullet punch? When did they, when did they give it that? Well, anyway, whatever. So, I decided to send out David because I realized King David, my slow king, can actually wall his entire meta chance moveset, and I'm kind of out of options here. So, I go for the Trick Room, and that, this is going to save me in this battle. I go for Surf. Why? Because, well, see, my slow king has Surf, Ice Beam, and Psychic. Psychic cannot hurt Crawdon. Ice Beam doesn't hit Crawdon as hard as a stab Surf does, so that's all I really can do here. 
So King David gets hit. It goes down in one shot because it doesn't have as much physical defense. And I go for Amphi. Ant for Ross. The star of this battle right here. Now I go for the Cotton Guard. It's boosts my defense by four stages. So this pretty much is going to put a hole in it. And for us, it's slow as dirt, but it all speeds because I'm in Trick Room. Trick Room, for those of you... Oh my god, phone's ringing. Hold up. Anyway, Trick Room reverses the speed. Slower Pokemon go faster in Trick Room. Faster ones go slower. So I Thunderbolt his Grand Cross with the Overkill Critical. His Crawdon goes down, and I'm getting a little bit of health back. And his phone needs to stop ringing. Alright, and... Alright, so he sends out his Rhyperior. What shocks me is that Ampharos is slower than Rhyperior. I don't know how that happened, but I outspeed it in Trick Room, so it, it must be slower. So I use Focus Blast. Awesome coverage move for Ampharos. Bangs that Rhyperior in one shot, knocks it out. It doesn't even have Stab, and it just kills. And, and Rhyperior has Solid Rock, which reduces super effective moves damage to it. A non Stab Focus Blast just killed that thing. So he goes for the crunch, I guess because he wants to get the defense drop. Personally, I would have used Stone Edge right there for the chance of critical hit and step. So I go for another Cotton Guard because even if he did get the defense drop, it would have been nullified right there. I get a little bit more health back from leftovers and that Toxic from earlier pays off and his Aerodactyl goes down. Underbite just got his jaw broke, son. So he sends out Pyro Sprite. The name is a Homestuck reference for those of you who are in a Homestuck. Anyway, he sends out his Salamence here, and he goes for a home clause. I'm like, bro, are you trying to set up on my Ampharos? Do you not know what kind of power this thing is packing right here? Do you not know? So, I go for the Power Gem. The Power Gem gets a critical hit here. That kills his Salamence. I don't know how much it would have did if it didn't get that critical, but his Salamence got fried in one shot. And I'm thinking, what good is home clause? But after this battle, he said his Salamence actually has Hydro Pump, Fire Blast, and... I forget what his last move was, but basically Hydro Pump and Fire Blast would have been boosted in accuracy from Home Claws and it would have hit my special defense way harder. So anyway, he goes for his baggy pants again and he tries to bulk up because there's nothing else he really can do. I'm going for the Thunderbolt here because I'm about to cook this thing as revenge because you know what? Screw Metachem, man. Screw that thing. I did not know that thing is as powerful as it could be for real. Even though it's not that strong here against the plus six defense and for us. So, you know, Amphi is pretty much taking hits like a boss. He goes for the Psycho Hut Cut. If he got a critical hit there, that would have been it for my Ampharos because Scrafty would have been dead. So, Baggy Pants goes down. MC Hammer gets fried. And that is good game, Stitch Ego. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. I got another huge battle coming up on the way. It's like 60-something turns long. And once again, I tried to use some Pokemon that weren't that I haven't used before previously on YouTube. So um, yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy. I, I hope you liked it.